So I've been watching uh, climbers, mountaineers, uh, climbing Mount Everest lately on YouTube. And I'm really enjoying watching this uh, journey of these men and women going up and the physical process of it, also the mental process of it. And it also has a spiritual process. And it gave me a really good idea of how to create an analogy from climbing Mount Everest. So today I got this board behind me, and I'm telling you now it's really busy. Um, so I hope you can follow with me. And it will show you what it is, a spiritual process. And a spiritual uh, experience or process is really unique and it's individual. You can't rush a spiritual process because you have to integrate. You have to understand what you're learning and how to absorb that learning to change your life. So I created this board. Now I know it's very busy and I'll let you have a good look at it. Um, so as you can see here, you have Nepal. So people come in and they fly in. So for me, it's like the decision. Okay, you're going to Nepal. You're going for this excursion on the mountain. It's the same thing with the spiritual journey. You make a decision to go within yourself. And that's really the first big step because you're deciding to do this. You're going into yourself. So the decision to start is really important. And then you have to fly to the nearest airport close to Everest, which is called Bukla. Now, when you get to here, you're still in this beta wave, and that's why I wrote it. You're still in the thinking, you're still in this analytical prefrontal cortex, and that's how you're living your life every day. And this is normal because this is how we engage each other. We're always in this beta wave all the time. And it's about how do you get out of the beta wave to go into the alpha and the theta, which we talked about in the last videos. So when you start your spiritual process, once you get to this airport, it doesn't right away you can't start climbing the mountain. There's a huge trek. And this trek, which you can see, is about acclimatizing yourself with the thinner air where, so you can create more red blood cells to have more oxygen. So it's the same thing in the process of spiritual pro when someone is starting a spiritual process. In the beginning, when you're always in the beta wave, and this is your daily life, you're always using, you know, your rational, when you start going into the alpha, it's practice. Some people are very good at it and some people need more help because your brain is trying to block through defense mechanisms into the pain and this is normal. So you have to acclimatize yourself also to the alpha and the theta wave. Now, I made this rugged work going upwards and you're always going upwards with this whole journey. And so therefore, to do this whole climb takes about 13, 14, 15 days to go all the way up to base camp at Mount Everest. But when I work with people who are always in the beta, it's through sessions, it's through these ways of going in to see how your brain is acclimatizing itself to the alpha wave. It's about meditating, it's about relaxing, it's about creativity so that your brain starts to learn how to go into alpha, not to fear it, not to go around it. So this is why this, to expect as well, to acclimatize yourself to the alpha wave. So if you're starting meditation and it's not working, please don't get upset. It's normal. I used to fall asleep all the time in the beginning. I was so exhausted that I didn't even know. If you're always in beta and you're not relaxing enough, you're probably more tired than you think because we don't really rest. And if we rest, it's about just zoning out, watching our shows or going on social media. So therefore, please don't give up because the alpha takes time. Like when you're acclimatizing yourself to altitude sickness, you want to get your body, your physical body ready. It's the same thing with the mind. You want to get your mind ready to go in this space. So it's by creating an environment to go in deep into the alpha wave. So I take this pace when you're going towards Everest and you're, you know, you're doing this journey either through regression therapy sessions or even a hypnosis. It's the same thing as meditation because it's asking you to go into an altered state. And a lot of people, when you say the world altered state, they start thinking, I won't have control. That's not true. An altered state just means relaxation, the alpha wave. When you go into the theta, you're very much aware. You're not gone. When I tell people I'm going to do a meditation before the session or a hypnosis, I tell them they're not going to quack like a duck. You know, and I can make them do all kinds of silly things. The subconscious knows if there's a threat and it will tell the mind to wake up. So it's a natural state. A lot of us daydream. We don't worry about that. And daydreaming is super good for you. And again, that's the alpha state. Our brain naturally goes there. It needs to because that's the way we learn to relax our mind. 
So please understand that when you start this spiritual journey, one, it's unique because we don't, I don't know your, li your life, your experiences, your traumas, what your brain is trying to hide because it's afraid of the pain. It's all normal, this stuff. So you really have to be patient and that depends on each person how it goes. But don't give up. It doesn't mean because it doesn't work immediately that it doesn't work for you. It, you just have to be persistent and consistent so that you get used to going into the alpha wave. The more you practice going into the alpha wave, and I give homework for people. I, told, I said in the last video, drawing, dancing, anything creative is really good. Uh, walking in nature, the smells and the environment, the setting is really good for you. Talking, uh, telling a story to your kids, anything of that nature is really good for the alpha wave. And th those are the kind of homeworks I give people, really to get their brain ready to, that, to go into that wave. Now once you get there, now once the people climb the mountaineers, get to base camp, they actually, this is where you jump and you, you start slowly walking up Everest. Now the base camp, I sort of see it as theta wave. You're preparing yourself to get into that wave, to go in the deep of yourself, to find out your story. Now when you go into your story, you don't climb, you know, you don't get it all in one shot. It's like climbing Everest. It doesn't take one shot to get to the top. Most of the time they go from base camp to one camp, come back, go up to two, come back, so that their body starts acclimatizing to it. It's the same thing when you do uh, when you start going into theta wave, it's something that you have to practice. And if you're not very good at it, it doesn't mean that you'll always be bad at it. It takes time. It's a practice, especially because we live in a society that keeps you in this beta wave. So when you start going into theta, and it's sort of like the mountain is like a, a reversed uh, iceberg, if you, so, if you can look at it that way, and you start going up the mountain, well, the deeper, the higher you go, well, the more information you're getting. And if you look at these videos of these mountaineers, it's not easy. It really asks them physical work to take one step in front of the other and the mental challenge to keep telling themselves, keep going, keep going. Because sometimes your fears, your emotions, it could be sadness, whatever, sadness is difficult, anger, disgust, whatever you're feeling about yourself and you're starting to climb or to go into this, this subconscious and the theta wave, it's not easy because you, you, you don't know what to expect. So we don't like uncertainty. And this is me too when I started. Every time I went for a session or I did things of that nature, I got nervous. And of course you're nervous because you don't know what's going to come up. What I can say is what comes up is always familiar. People I really anticipate, oh my God, I'm going to see something I never knew. No, it's never that way. What's going to come up is going to resonate with familiarity to you because it's you, it's your story. So when you're going up the hill, going up that mountain to get to the summit, of course it's very difficult because that's a wave. It's asking you to get those thoughts, those experiences that really hurt you, that shifted you, it shaped your life. And now you have to re-look at them again because the only way to change something is to understand it. And to understand it takes time. And I've seen people who really want to rush the spiritual process. It's not possible. You really have to understand what you're seeing. A lot of the time when people do sessions and, or ceremonies, psychedelic ceremonies, we talk about the integration process. The integration process means that you're understanding, you're letting it sink in, you're absorbing the information. And that absorption of information can take weeks, months, so that you can process it. Because when you go into theta, and this is what a lot of people don't understand, and a lot of them think, oh, if I go into alpha and I go into my imagination, am I going to invent things of what I want to see? No, I'll tell you why. The alpha, we said it was relaxation imagination, where you're starting to enter an altered state. The reason for this it's an altered state is because in the theta, it's much more symbolic what you're going to see. And it, it, it demands another sort of thinking wave, another way of thinking about yourself. So example, uh, someone can see in the theta wave a symbolism about their house. So they'll say, oh, I saw this horse coming and this horse represents something. For them, it makes sense. And this is why I tell you everything is very familiar is because whatever you see, it's a representation to you. So this horse came along with this client and he felt very safe with this client, very, um, it was easier to do the journey in the theta wave, like a sort of like a spirit animal. 
Um, and I asked this client, why is this horse here? And they told me when I was young, I had this horse as a child that I would love and talk to it and felt open. So therefore, that's why the hot horse is there. It's to give this feeling of safety, familiarity, where they can open. And they felt that they needed the horse with them for the journey into the theta wave. The horse doesn't always stay there, but it's sort of a way for your inner self, the subconscious, which is always very loving, to help you through the process. And it's always a bit symbolic, but the person who is in that symbolism understands it. So this is why the alpha wave is a bit different than the beta. It's not in the here and now. It's more in the symbolic kind of language because when you get to the theta, that's what you're going to see is a bit more symbolic. Also, it's the place where we can talk to the guide. Um, it's the deeper self. It's in the heart. And I call the heart, heart, guide, please come in. Tell us more about the individual, what is significant for them to understand. And then when they get that guide, when it comes in through this information because you need guidance on certain things it doesn't mean i understand everything that the client says i am not the one who's the all-knowing of the client only the heart of the client or the greater identity which represents itself as a guide and a guide can represent itself as a woman or a man sometimes a spirit animal like i said like the horse so it's really to help the client have this form of communication with themselves now, I'm sure some of, some of you are going to say, well, how do you know when it's the guide? It's very clear. First of all, a guide or the heart, when it speaks to you, it's, it comes so quickly, like a really quick intuition, you don't even have time to think about it. You hear the answer and go, oh, I just heard this. There was no thinking. So that's the first thing. The second thing when the guide speaks, it's always positive. Always positive. If it's negative in any which way or it's criticizing you in any which way, it's not the heart. It's your head talking and making up stories to really block that communication. Now, some of you may ask me right now, well, if the guide comes in, which wave is the guide? Good question. Now, there's one last wave I didn't talk about, which is the gamma wave, which I have down here. And the gamma wave is the strongest wave because it comes from the heart. A lot of people don't know this, but the heart actually sends more electromagnetic energy out into the world and this is how we communicate this is what goes out to everybody and it can bypass electromagnetic energy of your mind because it contains more than your mind so when the heart comes in and this is where it's difficult sometimes for me to get to it's because so many people are in the beta wave it makes it really difficult to get in because you're not used to it we have to practice the alpha like i said acclimatizing yourself going up the mountain and once we get more and more into theta we go deeper into theta it's like climbing the mountain it's difficult because you're feeling your deep emotions you're feeling your stories your experiences you're going back there and it's not just to recite what you saw i'm always asking questions like i said in other videos what are you thinking what are you feeling what's happening what are your conclusions? And I'm asking all these questions to figure out the greater picture about how you think and feel. So the higher you go or the deeper you go into the iceberg, the more emotional it is. But on the other side, the more you see it, the more you resolve it, the more you have insights about it, and the more you can let it go. And this is important, letting it go. It's acceptance. So when you're in this space, and of course, things are familiar, but sometimes you still need guidance of what does this mean, or how do I heal this, or how do I change my thinking? Well, that's when I bring in the heart. Now, if you've worked in Theta a little bit with me, it's easier to get to the heart because you're in this altered deep state of yourself. The beta is shut down. So then the heart can come in. And all I have to say is heart, guide, please come through. And then suddenly they'll have like this vision like I said. And this heart rave, when it comes in, it's so important because it's the guidance system. It's your unique guidance system. So you need to cultivate this relationship with the inner self, the heart, and the guide. So as this gamma wave comes true and helps us through this uh, the theta wave or climbing the mountain, it's sort of like having your personal guide going, how do I put the rope? How do I put place my feet as I'm climbing up? And then you'll have the guide or the mountaineer telling him what to do. It's the same thing in spirituality. The guide comes in to give you advice on your path to understand yourself more so you can have a more happier reality around you. And the guide is the greater identity, but it represents itself as the guide. 
Now when this gamma wave comes in, this I tell people to practice at home. Because when you're at the top, you can always go into delta. Delta is the matrix that is everywhere. So I've represented here as the sky. There's no limits to it. It's an ocean of information. It's like dipping into consciousness and swimming through infinity. So a lot of people can go into delta without going through theta. And it doesn't mean that they know their story or their subconscious emotions and thoughts. It means that you can just go into the radar. Now, when I, people, what I do with them to help them in the radar is you should always go with your guide. It's like swimming through the ocean with your guide to understand what you're seeing, what is positive for you, and what is not. Because this ocean is huge, and whatever you're feeling, you can attract as well. So the guide should always be someone that is next to you during your journey. It helps you integrate the information you are receiving, and it takes patience. I've seen some clients where they want to rush this process. They really want to get into the alpha wave in the theta, get into the what's going on in, their, in themselves, and they rush it. And how do they rush it? A lot of the time I've seen some people go straight away in psychedelic ceremonies, and there's missing this integration process. So they want to skip all this. Of course it's possible. Everybody has their own journey, but she can't skip steps. And I know a lot of people want this one, two, three steps, and I'll, finally I'll change my brain, and I'll change my emotions, my well-being. If you don't integrate what you're, un what you're seeing and understanding, there's no change. It's, it's sort of like a self-responsibility, understanding your path, and it's a beautiful experience. You know, you can't rush the mountain. When people are coming up, they take their time. They look around. They feel the exhilaration of the scenery. They feel maybe one with nature. They feel small among the, the greatness of all creation around us. There's all kinds of sensations. So when you're going up the mountain, it's not always difficult. You can have very beautiful, profound moments when you're going into your subconscious. It's like a, a, a union with yourself, the deeper self. And those are profound moments. Please don't skip them. They really define you afterwards, these feelings. So if you look here at the base camp, where you start going to theta, and some people have a lot of difficulty. I've had clients with severe depression, um, anxiety, and so on, which means that your brain is just wanting to stay in theta, and they need a little boost. Of course, meditation can work for this. Monks have done it for thousands of years to really train their mind to go into alpha and theta. But when someone is suffering and really having a hard time with their thoughts, I really like to introduce... Uh, psychedelic uh, microdosing of truffles with the psilocybin component in it. It's a really small dose uh, that goes and you don't feel it. It's a perceptual. You don't feel it. It's really important. And what it does is that it really helps your mind. Now, what does it do? So you have this section in your mind called the default mode network. And in that place, is that's where all the negative chit chat comes in. And that's what is really difficult for people. So when there, someone is very depressed and having those constant depressive thoughts, and if they take microdosing every four days, they really feel a change because it stops the thinking and it really lights up other areas of your brain and really brings the emotions up. And that's a good way to start the process with Theta. Now, I like to share with everybody that I do this in a therapeutical type of environment where I'm doing sessions on you, we're practicing the alpha, we're slowly dipping in, and then if I see that your head is really, really rigid, it's too afraid, and I start some microdosing, and then those thoughts go down, and then it's easier for the person to, to be able to grasp and go into the greater identity. Um, and they don't take it forever, they take it for 12 weeks. And I'm going to talk more about this as we go with the videos. But I want to tell you that the whole process, this is what I'm trying to explain, is that your journey, your story should not be rushed. You should take your time. Don't give up because getting into the alpha takes time. And when you get good going into the alpha, then you really hit the theta. And this is where the real work is. This is where the subconscious is. So th these kinds of lessons and experiences should be taken slowly where you absorb it. Now, when you're in this area and you're really climbing your mountain, of course, there's dangers when you're climbing a mountain. You can fall off. The dangers when you're doing this in your theta, there is no danger. The only thing is we talk a lot about or we've heard about is the ego death. Now, ego death doesn't come any time in the beginning, okay? 
you're just starting the journey. You're trying to figure yourself out. This ego death really happens, and it happens more than once, where, where it happens when you're deep in the theta. Ego death doesn't mean you personally die. It's your beliefs about yourself die. And it feels or may give you the impression you're dying because you're holding on to those beliefs. You don't want to let it go. So it's such a resistance that it feels that I'm going to die if I let this go. And it, when you do let it go, and this is the secret, is trying to learn to let it go. Because don't forget, the beta is fighting. It wants to keep you in physical reality. It wants you looking outside of yourself all the time because we've trained you that way the whole society's geared that way so for us to go into the deeper waves and you go into there it's a bit more challenging if you've never done it so these kinds of experiences can happen and it's not dangerous if you're working with someone that knows it has been through it and so on they must happen to change your thinking but all of this is a journey and it's your journey Please take your time and enjoy the process because it makes the whole experience much better. Now, guys, please subscribe. If you have questions or comments, please write them down. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. You guys take care.